So, Friday the 13th happened. It was glorious, for all intents and purposes. I run day to day operations for a decent sized company. We have a president who runs the company in house. He can be tedious, overwhelming, and an all around dick sometimes. Other times, he can be cool as can be. This was one of the times he was an overbearing, micromanaging dick bag. As shop foreman, I take my job seriously with morale. If my guys aren't happy good product isn't produced. If good product isn't produced, customers aren't happy. Looking towards quality control, it doesn't help when guys are overworked, underpaid, and underappreciated. Friday was one of those days that started out well, but by 6.40am, it had deteriorated to crap. Note, we officially don't start work until 7am. After the start, it was beach about this, macro manage that. Several people being cussed at and belittled, everyone had had enough. Once in our programming office, the idea was floated by someone that we should walk out. He can't fire us all. Now, we've all joked about this time after time, but it's never been more than a thought. We grit our teeth and bear it. That day was something different. After getting yelled at again for something out of my control, I finally said F it. When someone asked if I was in and serious, I said yes. Then, it snowballed from there. A total of 20 were supposed to walk out, but due to cold feet and a few taking a dump, only 14 made it. At 10am, we made our move. I told everyone to wait until he would be distracted with a machine and we'd all clock out and leave. We all waited. When he was distracted, I gave the roundup signal and everyone left. A few stopped for beer to relax. We weren't intending on going back to negotiate until Monday. We all met at a guy's house and discussed why we walked, what we wanted, and what our terms were. One thing was very clear, we all came back or no one did. After talking for two and one half hours, and coming to our terms, we decided to head back after a text from him. We were going to corner him, we were going to talk it straight, or we weren't working anymore. The talk lasted almost two hours, with both parties flexing their given muscles at some point. But one thing was made clear, things were going to change, or we'd all go look for new jobs. After several people were threatened with being fired, and none being let go, we came to terms that benefited us. For once, our workplace had so much morale. People were excited to work again. We went back to work with a purpose, agenda, and pride. This is the first Monday I've looked forward to work in a year. Even the guys who cold and come, the people in the main office, we stirred the pot. We've made it known, we're not going to go through this anymore. It'll vouch for any of my men, and it'd do it again in a heartbeat. This happened when I was in college back in 2011. I lived in a 4 story dorm that was all guys, about 40 to 60 guys per floor. Each floor had one laundry room with 3 washers and 3 dryers plus cubbies to store your laundry bag slash soap while you were washing. A few months into the semester I noticed my laundry detergent was disappearing faster than it should be, not a huge deal but midly annoying. What made it a bigger deal was that whoever was stealing my detergent would also take my clothes out of the washer and leave them on the floor so they could wash their clothes. This pushed me over the line. I would typically do a load while I went to class, not classes, so this made finding the perp tricky. Then a golden idea hit me. I went to Walmart and bought a new jug of laundry detergent, the same brand I always get, but I also bought extra strength bleach. I poured half the detergent from the new bottle into my old bottle and replaced it with the extra strength bleach. That next day I did my laundry as usual, but left the new and improved detergent in the cubby instead of my regular stuff. Then I waited. After class sure enough my clothes were sitting in a pile on the floor soaking wet and the whole laundry room smelled of bleach. Just what I wanted. Fast forward to the next week. Every Monday night we had floor meetings where we basically talked about rules and crap as a floor. In walks the guy, we'll call him Bob, wearing a newly bleached hoodie and ruined jeans. Bob drops his pile of ruined clothes on the floor and starts spouting off about how someone owed him money for his ruined clothes. The whole floor bursts out in laughter, apparently I wasn't the only one Bob was stealing soap from. He didn't get another sentence out of his mouth before I told him stealing detergent was still a crime, so it was his own damn fault. Enjoy your bleached clothes Bob. 
My ex-husband Brian was slash is a toxic, controlling narcissist. Classic case. Our divorce was very bitter, but I tried to be fair, splitting custody and giving him decision making authority under the assumption that he would be a better father than he was a husband. Things went well for about a year. I got a new boyfriend who was great to both me and my kids and wanted to be involved in their life. When he found out my new boyfriend Tom was going to be attending my kids fall festival at school, he went off the deep end. He abruptly decided he wasn't going to watch the kids while I worked anymore. He also refused to let my friends or family watch the kids and said he had to meet them first but then would refuse to do so and claimed he would sue me for going against the custody agreement since he had decision making authority if I got a babysitter he didn't approve. I lost 2 days at work scrambling to find any place available which was difficult because of the school's location they attend. He began asking the kids to call him every night, which is fine, but if we were eating or busy doing something and I told him it would have to be later when they call, he would rage and threaten to sue me. He began asking me at all times where I was with the kids. One day I went into work for 3 hours to clean up some things I missed due to a storm. I left the kids with Tom, since waking them up at 4.30am seemed needless. When Brian found out, he raged and threatened to sue me. He threatened to apply for child support, even though we split custody. He raged about every little thing. He didn't bring the kids to the Christmas school play because he knew Tom would be there. He fought me over medical appointments for the kids and refused to pay his share because he didn't agree to the appointment and of course would sue me. He won't let me have the kids during his time, even to let them attend birthday parties or sleepovers with friends or family, something we had been doing for each other with no issue. This went on for about 2 months before I snapped. I hate when parents are willing to hurt their kids over their own egos. He kept threatening to take me to court, and I was fed up with the empty threat. So first, I wanted to make sure he couldn't afford to fight me in court. Brian was on food stamps. I knew it was only because he was claiming to pay his ex-wife rent, she still owns half the house, and he still owed her half the value. I sent his ex-wife a message asking her if she was getting rent from him, and she said no. I sent that letter to DCF, and they closed his food stamp card and sued him for fraud. Then his ex-wife turned around and sued him for her value of the house, since he was claiming to have been paying her all along. Then I sued him to modify the custody agreement and take out all the things he was using to try and harass me. I had screenshots of every nasty thing he sent me. I had a letter typed by his lawyer stating he was looking for another job since I wasn't paying him and that's why he couldn't watch the kids. So if he tried to get child support I could prove he was capable of finding more income. I had medical records and receipts showing I had paid for everything for the last year for the kids health needs. I had records of things he said to the kids about me. I had pictures of them looking filthy when picking them up from his house. I had receipts of everything I had spent on the kids for the past year. He folded pretty quickly, cannot harass me anymore, and is still paying off his first ex-wife. Strap in. This is a long one. Note, all names have been changed for privacy reasons. For those of you who don't know about my old job from my I don't work here story, I got a job back when, was about 19 or 20 years old at my town's public hospital in their food service department. I stayed with the place for 3 years, but it has gone down as one of the worst jobs I ever had for many reasons. Complainy nursing staff, insane hours, overworking me and cowhawkers, and just overall a very toxic work environment. I went in as a socially awkward girl with no spine for conflict or standing up for myself and came out a much stronger person because of this place, but there is a particular series of events that led to that. Let me set it up for you. My official title was a food service aide, or raid for short. My job I was hired for was to collect dirty trays and dishes from carts on their respective floors, wash all of the dishes that came into my dish room, and put them into the dish machine to be sanitized before I let the dishes dry and store them where they needed to go. Then, at the end of the night, I would break down the machine and clean the filters of leftover food and drain the water tanks of dirty soap water before going home. Over time, I became well acquainted with the dish machines we had, first one was 20 plus years old, and finally died on us. R.I.P. 
Big Bertha, and I could troubleshoot a problem with it, since I like machines enough to learn as much as I can about them. My boss took notice of this, and how hard I worked in the dish room every day, so he began to have me learn about the other parts of the department, so I could fill in, whenever someone called in, cooking on the grill, and serving food in the cafeteria, cashiering, helping to prepare food trays for patients, learning about different diets and their orders from the doctors, restocking floors for patients snacks and drinks, and finally deliver food to patient rooms. If that seems like a lot for one person, it was. Due to staff cutbacks, we were short a lot of manpower, so a couple of us had to learn as much as possible to keep us afloat. Now, onto the story. I had already been working in this small hospital for just over a year at the time, and I was determined to stay at least a few years to help make my work history look pretty good in the stance of longevity. That, and pure stubbornness I guess. In that time, my boss hired a new supervisor for our department, who will now be called Chad. At first, Chad seemed like a pretty nice guy, and me, being the awkward dork I am, tried to help him fit in with the others at work. I told jokes to him, got him to open up a bit to the others, and soon he was able to have a conversation rather easily. All was good. Then he passed his 3 mark probation period, and was no longer being constantly watched by boss. Chad turned into an insufferable a-hole. He began to bark orders, as if he owned the kitchen, demanding to know why certain things weren't being done his way, and overall was slowing down production tremendously for everyone. Not to mention, he himself was a lazy sea when there would normally be two people washing dishes. If one of them called in, it would mean whoever was there had to pick up the slack and do it all by themselves. Chad wouldn't lift a finger to help, unless he knew boss was going to be in the kitchen, and not in his office by hours. And even then, Chad didn't know what he was doing. And to top it all off, he made it a point to take jabs at me in front of the others, trying to make me look stupid, because I was the youngest member of the department. It felt like I had gone back to high school, being the quiet nerdy girl who was picked on for liking things out of the norm, and being laughed at for being weird. I like to draw, love anime, and play video games. So when the topic of, what are you gonna do on your days off, came up, I usually said something like, I'm gonna relax at home and play, insert game, after doing some chores. Then Chad would make a remark like, wow, you play video games? You must not have a life. A hole. It got to the point, where I was so fed up with Chad's BS, that I began to grow a bit of backbone. I was fed up with constantly having anxiety working with him, and hiding in the bathroom sobbing during my shift, when he was making my life a living hell. I began to make cracks back at him, and get into yelling matches with him in the kitchen. No sound escaped the doors once they were closed, so no one outside the department heard us. He couldn't fire me, only tell my boss and sign a write up, which he never did, because he saw it as a way of losing to me in our arguments. Anytime he made jokes at me, I threw them right back, and when I knew he was doing something wrong, I would fight back, and tell him how it was supposed to be done. This went on for a few months, and then, the final straw. As a dishwasher, you're supposed to take temperatures in the dish machine, to ensure it's working properly. It's supposed to reach a certain temperature when washing dishes, to ensure everything is being sanitized properly. If not, there could be an outbreak in the hospital from germs or mold. All the temperatures and times were recorded on a sheet, and placed in a folder in the detician's office by the dish room. I was making my usual rounds of taking temps, when I noticed the machine was reading about 20 degrees in the red cooler than where it was supposed to be. I shut down the machine, and began to drain the water tanks. This was my way of troubleshooting, if the tanks had just not been drained in a while, or if something was seriously wrong with the machine. As I was draining the water, Chad comes in, and sees me doing this. He was furious, and begins to rant. Chad, what are you doing? We still have piles of dishes to wash. Me, temps were low gotta drain the water, and see if that fixes it. I think. Chad, how the hell is that going to fix it? You're just wasting time. Me, visibly annoyed, if you'd let me finish, I'm seeing if morning shift drained the water or not. If not, then it will only take 10 minutes to fill the tanks back up. Chat, I know the tanks were drained. I drained them myself. 
I get up and look him in the eye, knowing he was lying, since he always asked me to take care of the machine at closing. Me, prove it. Show me how. He was about to yell again, when my co-worker Dean in the diet office peers into the dish room. Chad's face turns red, and he gives me a death glare before storming off. I continue to work on the machine, and once the tank's refilled, I initialed all of my temps and times on the sheet, before returning it back in the office. The day goes by, and after a hellish time on the floors serving patients, I was in the middle of my cleaning duties with the cook and Dean. I get called by chat, saying that boss wanted to talk to us. So, after making sure the dish machine was cleaned, I walked with him to boss office. There, boss begins to tell me that Chad had given him evidence that I was slacking on my duties and that I was not taking temperatures like I was supposed to for the dish machine. He said that thankfully, Chad took the temps, but if I wanted to keep from getting into trouble and to keep the department from getting into legal trouble, I needed to step up and be a team player. He said that I was getting a verbal warning, but if I did this again, I would receive a write-up or possible suspension. My jaw hits the floor, and even though Chad is smiling smugly in the corner, I chose not to argue with my boss and head back to the department, defeated and fighting back tears. I was sure that I took the temps, and when I checked the book, I was shocked to see what I found. My temps were still in there, and times I took them, but the bastard actually photocopied the page, whited out my initials, and replaced them with his initials. He then traced over the pre-existing handwriting to make it look legit, with his initials. He made it look like I had not taken temps all day during my shift. I racked my brain wondering how the hell he could have gotten away with it with no one noticing him, and then it hit me. He must have done it in the diet office when no one was around, due to dinner trays being made under the dietitian's supervision. I was pissed, and I began to bide my time for an opportunity for revenge. It came about a month later. Now since we are a hospital in a small town, it was normal for us to get catering orders for the members of ours and upper management for when they had meetings upstairs. Those orders were easy, because usually they wanted chips, pre-made sandwiches, and soda for about 10 to 15 people. However, we occasionally got huge catering orders for district meetings, and that was when we would bust out the catering dishes. Large white immaculate plates, silverware, glass cups, punch bowl, food serving plates, desserts, tea, and cloth napkins were usually used for these events, and even though it was a lot more dishes for the understaffed aides, it was pretty simple. This particular order was for the CEO, his workers, hours, doctors, head nurses, and the higher ups who owned the hospital's contract. The estimated amount to be served was about 150 people, since many members of the board were going to show up as well. Usually we got the huge orders a week in advance, so the supervisor can arrange the schedule to have more bodies on deck to help. Chad of course, schedules only me to be the afternoon dishwasher, meaning I had to clean the dishes for the entire hospital and the catering order. This was my chance for revenge. As always, Chad didn't lift a finger to help me in the dish room, and the entire room was completely full of dirty dish carts from the floors. The hospital had about 95 patients that were eating, and morning shift had been running behind, so I had both breakfast and lunch dishes to clean. It wouldn't have been so bad if we didn't have to take apart the trays one by one to make sure no needles or blood were on the trays, and clean each piece. I was stressed beyond belief because I knew that the 150 people catering order would be due any time now. But, I kept myself calm and tried to keep doing my job. A few hours go by and Chad calls out to me to shut off the dish machine. It was very loud and tells me to go and pick up the catering order. Instead of arguing with him, I decided to do it and asked if he was going to help me. He gives me a crap eating grin and tells me, I have better things to do. You can do it alone. Perfect. So despite me being exhausted, sweaty, and have a wet uniform from my dishwasher apron with holes in it, I made my way to the management floor. I scope out the damage, and I realize I'm going to have to make two or more trips across the hospital to clean this up. I begin to pick up the dishes in the meeting room, take off the tablecloths, and stack them on one of the two long carts. 
While I'm about to clean up the food serving table, I look over to see the door that led into the hour office was opened slightly, and a few women were laughing and commenting on how good the pork roast was at the meeting. I knew they were within earshot of me. It was showtime. In this moment, I was thankful for being clumsy and having sprained my ankles so much growing up, because it was easy to do this. While I was cleaning up, I deliberately tripped on a chair that was left slightly out and went crashing onto the floor. I sprained my ankle doing this, which was what I was planning, and the glass where I was carrying fell and crashed to the floor. The two women in ours heard this and rushed over to see me laying on the floor with shattered glass all around me and a few minor cuts on my arms, and they rush over to help me up. We'll call them Jane and Jill. Jill, are you okay? Me, I'm alright. I say on the brink of tears. Jane, are you sure? Here, let's get you into a chair. Me, th thank you, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, please don't tell my boss. They help me up into a chair, and when they check me over to see I'm in tears, they began to ask me questions. Joel, where is your help? Me, it's just me right now, I'm supposed to pick this up, and take it back to wash them. Jane, seriously? All by yourself? Why didn't you get someone to help you? Me, we are short a dishwasher today, I'm trying as best as I can, but I keep falling more and more behind. At this point, I begin to cry uncontrollably. All of the stress and emotions I had bottled up from the past few months from working with Chad in the department had finally built up so much that I let loose my repressed emotions on these two ladies. I told them about the understaffing, the insane amount of overtime I and my co-workers were getting, how I was the only one doing dishes that day, how my supervisor refused to help me, and how much stress I had been in. I wasn't faking any of it, I was just waiting for the right moment to finally break down and tell the right people about all of the negative feelings I had. Needless to say, the two were shocked at my breakdown. Once I calmed down, they told me they wanted to see just how bad things had gotten in the dish room. If it was as bad as I said it was, they would make a case with my boss. So with their help, they helped me get back to the dish room with the carts of dirty dishes, and I held onto the cart while limping down the hall. Once we got to the staff door for my department's dish room, I told them to wait outside while I pushed the carts in. Confused, they comply and hug the wall, waiting to see what happened next. I slipped into the dish room with the carts like nothing happened, and Chad comes in and glares at me. At this point, the room was completely full of dishes, carts, and now to catering carts that took up a large amount of space. You could barely walk through the damn place. We then begin our normal yelling match, all while the door was left slightly open behind me. Chat, about time you came back. What took you so long? Me, I was picking up a order by myself. What did you expect Chad? Chat, I was expecting you to do your job. Clearly you can't, look at all of these trays. Me, I just picked up and began to work on lunch when you told me to get the catering. Did you do any of these while I was gone? Backslash gesturing to the room. Chat, no, I had my own work to do. You're just too slow. Me, how the hell am I supposed to wash dishes when I'm picking up the catering order? Chat, not my problem, do your job or you'll get a write up. With that, he leaves and I go back out to meet with Jane and Jill. Their faces are filled with anger and disgust from what they just listened to and they reassure me that this was going to stop. Now, we walk together back to the management floor, and as I limp into boss office behind them, the two ladies began to go off on him about Chad and what he had been doing. Confused, boss had no idea what they were talking about, and looked to me for an explanation. However, Jill and Jane told him to follow us, and we walked back to the department. At this point, my ankle was throbbing with intense pain, since I sprained it pretty good. When we got to the dish room and opened the door, my boss was appalled at the amount of work that was left for me. And when he heard that there was no second or even third backup dishwasher scheduled, he almost lost it. He called for chat, and the four of us waited in the detician's office. While we waited, I told them I didn't want him to lose his job over this, but I wanted him to know how I felt, being left with so much work. I really felt this way, but a huge part of me just wanted to see him suffer. When Chad walked in to see me, and three powerful people with me, his face turns pale, but his normal crap talking face is replaced with one of fake concern and confusion. 
though, his act fails, as boss began to demand why he didn't schedule someone to help me. He told boss he had been helping me as much as he could today, but Jane and Jill stop him and repeat what he told me before. Boss is disgusted, and he looks to chat after discussing the situation more. Boss, this is what's going to happen. Op hurt herself cleaning up the catering, so she's going home for the day and will be off for two days. Chat, she can't go home, we're short staffed. Boss, that was your fault, not hers. She's not going to suffer, because you screwed up. Chat, B but. Boss, also, I don't care how much overtime this accrues, you are staying after. Chat, what for? Boss, tonight, you're gonna be the dishwasher. All by yourself, you're going to wash every single one of those dishes in the catering order. And since it's almost time for dinner to be served to patients, I guess you'll be doing those too. If you leave anything for morning crew to clean up, and if the department isn't cleaned like it's supposed to, consider yourself fired. Once he said that, I was sent home for the day, and the three continued to tear chat a new one as I limped out the door. When I got back to my car, I was smiling so much that my cheeks were hurting all the way back to my house. Epilogue. After I got back from my two day break, I noticed that there were empty slots open on the schedule that said, new hire but no hours. It seemed that after the talk, Bowers decided to grant us new hire re-slots to help with our understaffing, but the slots were still empty. I also found out something that was just icing on my beautiful revenge cake. I found out from Dean that Chad had to stay until about midnight cleaning the entire load of dishes that he let pile up on me, and the next day, he even helped the one person he scheduled for morning dishes to clean up breakfast, since he scheduled himself to work the morning shift. But the cherry on top was that when there were large catering orders, Chad had to set up and then clean up the orders from then on, since he was convinced it could all be done by one person. So when he was cleaning a large catering order by himself in the dish room, and I walked by about to get ready to serve dinner to the patient rooms, he stops me. He then asks me if I minded staying back and to help him, since there was so much of the catering order left to clean up. I smile and said simply, not my problem, do your job. Boom. If you enjoyed the stories, slap the like and subscribe button for more of them, and don't forget to support the original writers with an upvote, links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.